Notre Dame Preparatory School in Towson, Maryland sits on 60 acres of beautiful, peaceful land and serves as a second home to more than 700 students nurturing their education and development. However, these lands that now bring happiness to so many young women used to be part of one of the largest and most diverse plantations in America. The Hampton Plantation, owned and managed until 1948 by the Ridgely family, was, at its most prosperous time, home to more than 350 slaves, making it the largest slaveholding estate in Maryland. The operations on the plantation included farming, ironworks, coal mining, stone quarries, and textiles, ever increasing the need for more slave workers. When completed in 1790, Hampton Mansion was the largest private home in America and still stands as one of the finest examples of Georgian architecture. The Grand Estate also included a garden terrace, orchard, and thoroughbred stables. Maryland developed as a plantation colony and most of the first slaves were brought over as indentured servants. Later, it was determined by Governor Charles Calvert that all Negroes or other slaves already within the province and all Negroes and other slaves to be hereafter imported into the province shall serve durante vita, and all children born of any Negro or other slave shall be slaves as their fathers were for the term of their lives. The owning of slaves became a symbol of wealth and power, and the practice remained until 1867 when the Maryland Constitution outlawed slavery and extended the right to vote to non-whites. Slavery at Hampton was unusual for two reasons. First, the type of industry business in which the Ridgelys were involved was atypical of the large agricultural plantations of the Deep South, which meant that some of the slaves were involved in industrial jobs. Second, Hampton was in close proximity to the free state of Pennsylvania and the city of Baltimore, which had a large population of free blacks. This closeness provided the opportunity for refuge of runaway slaves. In 1829, Governor Charles Carnan Ridgely died, and his will split up the estate among various heirs and manumitted most of the slaves on the plantation. His son, John Ridgely, inherited the mansion and a large amount of acreage, where he kept the farming, stone quarries, and various investments for his income. However, with the end of slavery and the decline of the local agricultural business, Hampton's income began to wane, and the family sold off more portions of the land. What remains is 62 acres of historical and architectural significance straddling Hampton Lane, including the mansion, farmhouse, and slave quarters, which was named a National Historic Site in 1949. Today, the land formerly owned by the Ridgely family is now mostly residential area and includes the land on which Notre Dame Prep was built. The girls who walk through the halls of the school have little idea of the history of the land on which they learn and grow, and of the slaves who used to occupy it. Only after visiting the Hampton Historic Site did I realize the importance of what I had been passing every day on my way to school. The land itself held so much history and importance in the shaping of Maryland in its early days. The land, which some could find unsettling due to its association with slavery, is something to be remembered and cherished just like Notre Dame Prep.